Hey everyone. Um, as you can see, the Grizzly is tore apart. Um, she needs some well-needed maintenance. A uh, few things that I'm doing. Just want to give you guys an update here. Um, obviously, I changed all the fluids front and back. New oil filter. Um, with every oil change, I always add a funnel full of Lucas Heavy Duty Oil Stabilizer. Keep everything wet in there because uh, this thing does sit uh, from time to time for you know more than a few weeks. So every time I start it up, I want the rings to be moist, um, especially after swamping it a couple times, you know, five six years ago. Uh, radiator. It's time for a new radiator. Um, here's what it looked like. When I pulled it. She's just caked. It's hard to clean the back side of radiators that are in Grizzlies, uh, let alone the front. The front's also hard. Um, I haven't relocated it yet because I don't want it, any more shit on my front rack. But, I don't know. Might do a radiator relocate next year. We'll go one more year. Um, but, I want to order a new radiator. Uh, because I got her a little hot at Tigerton last weekend. Uh, the radiator was only about uh, three quarters full of antifreeze. I don't know if that was from two years ago when I did a cleaning and new radiator flush. If I didn't run it long enough and it didn't cycle long enough and it went down to that level. Or if a little bit leaked out because when I overheated this thing, um, I shouldn't say really overheat, but the, the temp light came on. I wasn't in limp mode or nothing, but um, I, we did smell antifreeze. Uh, like something, some of it boiled out. So... Uh, I went ahead and ordered a new radiator. Um, the other thing is, is my breather line for my fan that hooks on right here, that blew off. So I was really nervous that the fan was going to be junk, but that thing takes off like a bed out of hell when you put 12 volt right to it. So, um, And the reason the fan wasn't on when I was overheating was uh, they are so full caked of mud it couldn't turn. And these things don't have a whole lot of whole lot of takeoff. There's still some mud right here. i got to get out of there. But... They don't got a whole lot of startup power, but once they're going, they're, they hum. So I ordered this new radiator. This is an Amazon aluminum radiator from China. Not too excited about that. It is thicker. The uh, reason I ordered this aftermarket one is because, uh, apparently, uh, good luck finding a brand new one. Um, called three local dealerships. Y'all gave me the same answer. Back ordered, no ETA. Um, on Power Sports One's website, which is our uh, one of my favorite local Yamaha dealers, uh, the part number is actually unavailable um, with no superseded part number. So I'm like, well, shit. So um, I did get one of these rubber isolator bushings pressed in here. That went real well. Uh, I didn't get one of these clips out yet, but I got to do all these clips. One thing I noticed with this fan is getting all these bolts to line up might be might be a chore I'm nervous about that hmm we're gonna see because I mean you can be a little off center and still get this thing bolted but I read reviews on this and people are getting it in just fine um, one thing to note is it does come with an extra breather port right here and this one is bigger than the stock. So um, I did look at this my uh, breather hose, which is right here. I'll be able to warm that up with a acetylene torch. You know, hold it hold it away like this and just get this hot. I'll be able to stretch it over. Because um, I, I, I was able to get it already with without it warmed up. So next thing, and this. This was an extra port. Looked just like this one, but a hair smaller. I cut it off. And a buddy of mine's a steam fitter at a local uh, machining machine shop, uh, fabrication shop. So I said, "Hey, can you cut that off and aluminum weld that back on? Take weld it back on." He said, "Oh, absolutely." So gave him that Friday night. He gave, gave it back to me uh, on Friday or this morning, <clears throat> Saturday morning. And so I'm gonna go ahead, swap everything over, and see how it gets set into the uh, Grizz. And once everything's hooked up, and I'll, I'll give that review here in the same video. Another thing is, is I had to order new foil drive switch. Foil drive was working fine, but then when I, when I would swap over to diff lock, I'd have to, you know, play with the play with the diff lock. You know, like I'd have to like push it 
like in and out like this a little bit and then finally it would lock in like it wasn't making contact so um, I didn't do any diagnosing I just that's how I diagnosed it so yeah call me stupid that's fine um, and obviously recharging the cane and air filter looks like I got enough oil on there now it's all red so when I do that is I just get their their power clean cane and power clean spray that on I do two applications five minutes apart and I let it sit for ten more minutes turn it on the back side I rinse it out with just water for I'd say probably a good two or three minutes and then I let it dry overnight recharge it throw it back in and then uh I had all this extra winch cable rolled up in here. Well, I'm going to cut these off and bought myself a bigger crimping tool for battery cables and winch cables and some different connectors. So we'll get that fixed up too. And then I got to pop this cap off this winch and clean up, clean the uh, contactors or points or points, I think is what they're called. Not points. That's a distributor. Brushes. Clean the brushes up. Maybe file them down just a hair, blow it out, put it back together. That Badlands will be good for another year yet. Other than that, I'm going to grease the rear end. And I got to clean up them snorkels, put different heat tape on the uh, ones that go down to the CVT and get that all buttoned up. And yeah, stay tuned for this radiator. Uh, I'm going to continue. I'm going to do the four-wheel drive switch first, and I'm going to throw that radiator in. Stay tuned. Got the new four-wheel drive switch on. It took literally five minutes cool thing is is it plugs in right here so it's literally you take that piece of plastic off if you don't have snorkels and everything it's literally a five minute change so all right got everything in bushings went in good the uh, metal inserts that you see that come out here uh them obviously go on the bottom so make sure these are on the bottom um one thing I didn't notice is these tabs are welded on in a little different location. So when you put the fan on, there's actually a gap from the plastic to the tab. So when you tighten the screw down, that's going to bend this part and put stress right here, which I think is just going to break over time. So to compensate that, I put two washers under each one, and she is basically mounted perfectly flush and as you can see fan spins good so so that's the only tip I got here uh, these washer these rubber things I kind of lubed them up with some uh, uh, some PB just to uh, make the job a little easier and just to give you a side-to-side -side comparison yeah that's how much bigger it is so it's gonna be real good for cooling, overall cooling, but for what I do with this machine, you see what my radiator looks like? That's gonna cause even more mud in there. It's even gonna be harder to clean, but it is what it is. I might actually have the twice the coolant capacity though. So either way, let's put it on. I will go, I'll catch, I'll catch you guys after that. All right, it's in. Took a while. First thing that I'm gonna tell you guys about. You can see the fan shroud right here. It's gonna hit the battery box. Yes, I, ca I can't get my finger, I barely get my fingernail in there, so I cut a little bit too much out of there, but that fan shroud definitely you need to cut a good uh five i don't know a quarter of an inch off i did about a half inch just so i didn't have to try mounting this again and then pull it back out like i had to do one time already uh like i expected uh, i did get this uh stock breather hose that goes right to the overflow tank i did i did get that on um grab the torch just held it away just kind of warmed it up uh you will need a bigger clamp um i did order uh, you know a vent line clamp kit uh, another note to tell you about is the fan wire right here that will get wedged between the bracket lift and the fan if you have a bracket lift I don't know if you guys can see that this wire right there comes off the back of the uh, fan there if that's down this down here 
it'll get wedged and you gotta take these two bolts out pull it back out and, and try getting that wire up um, otherwise obviously check to make sure the fan spins I get my hand in there yep fins spins freely got my vent line on this time with a fresh uh, vent line clamp um, these are cables I got to hook to my winch so I think I'm good to go other than that I don't think um, it doesn't go on all the way to these uh, pegs here so I did put I had some hard foam laying around I just I just shoved them in there so it can't come off any further than it is already but it's it's three quarters of the way on she's sturdy I think I'm ready to uh, fill her up with some antifreeze all right so I got rest of the plastic on around it um, everything fit fine um, just got done doing my 10 minute um, antifreeze test or new radiator test I don't see any leaks um, I got it hot enough to turn the fan on for about 15 20 seconds um, and one for about 10 minutes uh, with these machines it takes about 10 minutes and I was at probably half throttle for a good five minutes of it start the razor up it fan turns on in five minutes at an idle so it just shows you it's how much less heat this thing produces than a twin so yeah, other than what I discussed earlier about my, uh, getting that fatter, thicker radiator in, um, rusty old type plastic went on just as normal. Um, I'm obviously going to let this cool down a little bit and then pop the cap off and make sure that it's still full. And if it's not, I'll cap it off. Uh, capacity for that machine. I'd say about three quarters of a jug um, versus... This was my last, this is, I got half a jug here. This was the last time I took my OEM radiator out, washed it, put it back in. The machine took about half a jug. So now it's, yeah. So it definitely took a good 50 to 65% more antifreeze. So it definitely had more capacity. Um, hopefully that'll help in the cooling, obviously, once I get in the mud, which doesn't take long with the Grizz. Oh, we'll see we'll see if she keeps the machine cool so I'll do a review later in the later next summer obviously it's October right now it's a 70 degree day here in Wisconsin but uh, it this is gonna be the last 70 degree stretch this is abnormal for this time of year we're gonna be getting down into the uh, uh, 20s for lows here in the next week uh, looking at the extended forecast so I probably won't really test the radiator real well until next spring but we'll uh, we'll pick you up pick up then. Thanks for watching.